are indeed talking about correspondent banking because it's fair to say that it's come a long way since the shock of the global financial crisis. Banks have made massive steps forward, but it's also fair to say that they are not yet out of the woods. What then are the major forces impacting the evolution of the business now? And how are these influencing correspondent banking? Well, to find out more about the current stage of transformation and indeed the prevailing bank model, I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by Luca Corsini, who's head of transactions and payments at Unicredit, and Massimo Rotino, who's head of transactions and payments FI sales also for Unicredit. So, gentlemen, it's very, very good to see you. Luca, let me start with you first. I mean, look, can you tell us about the major forces that are impacting the evolution of the broad business context and also how these in turn are influencing correspondent banking. Um, Juliet, let me, let me not, uh, let's say, repeat a bit the usual topics uh, being, uh, you know, technology, client expectation, uh, new entrants and so on. I think this is, these are topics which are well known to everybody. Um, I think one of the new forces shaping correspondent banking is the geopolitical dimension. Geopolitical dimension was always there, but I would say in the last 12, 18 months, uh, got a completely different dimension. Think about central bank digital currency, what is on the agenda of the politician regarding uh, this digital currency, but not only, even uh, the discussion about SWIFT uh, just before the Russian crisis. There is a geopolitical dimension where the banks uh, need also to navigate. And sometimes banks are navigating this new environment, uh, which is becoming a more and more complex environment. Uh, we had, uh, let's say, a direct experience uh, in terms of how to navigate the complexity, but also the different attitude in terms of sanction risk uh, mm. across uh, even within Europe, uh, without mentioning eventually the Europe, UK, US uh, approach to this topic. Let's stay with that idea of, of geopolitics because you're absolutely correct about that. It really does loom very, very large. And let's be honest, the main crises are not going to be resolved immediately. So given that, Massimo, what has it taken to, well, what has it done to the current stage of transformation in that correspondent banking model? Is there a prevailing bank model or is it possible that geopolitical forces could construct something which is entirely different? As you mentioned, uh, <coughs> the transformation uh, is ongoing. We are not out of the woods. I think you use this expression. But uh, we need to acknowledge also the great progress that have been made since the financial crisis. SWIFT-led innovation, it's, it's key. If we think about SWIFT GPI, for example, how this has uh, brought more transparency, efficiency into the system, particularly in the corporate and B2B space, uh, but clearly, uh, and especially in the low value payment, uh, there is still a lot to do. And new entrants are bringing new ways uh, to do business. So uh, banks are clearly uh, innovating uh, incrementally on their existing corresponding banking models, but more and more are open to consider a, a transformative way to do, to do their business, looking also at other partners. And uh, in this respect, I think uh, uh, we have a very interesting and exciting journey ahead of us. Still, we don't know what will be uh, the prevailing model because there are so many gray areas, so many uncertainties on applications, interconnections and interoperability between different systems. But uh, uh, the journey is on. Absolutely, the early stages. But Luca, come back into conversation because look, Regardless of these changes, the forces which are driving it, it always comes back to the regulators. We can't rule them out. So would you ask for changes or improvements by regulators in terms of the way that they approach correspondent banking? What is the best course for them? OK, I think here the key, the key word is standardization. Um, let me make a step back. Um, it is fully acceptable and makes sense uh, that the regulator are using the banks uh, to somehow rules and police uh, the correspondent banking, i.e. the international payment uh, uh, environment. Um, as, as I was saying, for the geopolitical risk, uh, I mean, there is a complexity given the different approach of the different regulators uh, on a national level, which evidently is an element of complexity for the banks, especially for banks operating internationally, having a, a footprint beyond their own uh, national border. 
Plus, uh, there is a technological aspect because standardization is not only in terms of rules, but it is also in terms of IT, digitalization, and somehow also compliance rules. Then there is uh, the further, uh, probably one of the most important dimensions in terms of what the regulators can do is also to build a fair level of play between banks and non-banks in terms of compliance, in terms of rules and so on, because uh, if, if the banks are playing this key role to control and to police this environment, uh, then I would say the same rule, the same strict rule should apply across the board to all the actors of this uh, Christian banking international payments. Fair point, but then Massimo, how do you actually leverage cooperation with other banks so that you can develop the correspondent banking business model? Absolutely, cooperation is key and uh, all banks uh, have now, including the global banks, uh, have now acknowledged that they can only enrich and, 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 and continue in the transformation journey by cooperating with other banks. I make one example. Within the o open banking framework in Italy, banks have put together, uh, have been uh, worked together in order to develop nice applications such as the account Ivan Check. This is just to make an example. More and more on uh, uh, cross-border payments, banks are looking at their respective networks and strengths, capabilities in different corridors to really uh, el uh, leverage on, 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 uh, on their respective strengths and enhance in this way the uh, service for their clients. And uh, we are investing as a group in uh, um, platforms that are, uh, uh, that are aimed to integrate operationally with other banks in order to enrich the um, value that those banks can bring to their corporate, as well as we are looking for the same service in order to enrich uh, the value for our corporate. So cooperation amongst banks and in a broader sense within uh, the financial industry and all the players in the correspondent banking is more and more key. Mm. I mean, look, the bottom line, Luca, is that there are so many moving parts to this picture, but when will we achieve greater stability? The, is correspondent banking here to stay? That, that's, that's really the hard the, 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 the short answer is yes. Instability and, and volatility will be the new normal. And I see f four fundamental uh, moving parts. One is the key transformation uh, coming from the ISO format. Uh, let's remember, this is uh, the biggest transformation of this uh, international payment in the last 10, 15 years, uh, which uh, I really hope uh, uh, will happen in November 22, because uh, all the banks have invested heavily on this transformation. The other one is, as I was saying, the geopolitical risk. The third one, which I see some uh, hints, is also stopping and reverse the de-risking of the correspondent banking, which was something uh, somehow driven by the high compliance and and somehow here regulator also can play a role in order to help uh, the emerging market banks or the poor countries uh, not to get out, uh, not to be cut off uh, from the correspondent banking because uh, everybody starting to realize that correspondent banking is a factor in the developing in the economic development of many countries. And the last one, which is, I would say, the big topic uh, of cyber, at least this is my perception, is the low value payments. Unicredit is uh, one of the sponsors with Go and we think this should be the, 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 the final solution, but low value payment, uh, how to make retail payment faster, quick and cheaper is the big topic probably of correspondent banking in the next years. Sure, and one that, that's not likely to go away soon, is it Massimo? No, absolutely. Uh, I think, look, uh, new entrants, fintechs are uh, pushing the boundaries also in terms of regulation, and this is bringing more efficiency and uh, higher level of competition in the, institution, we, we, in the industry, which is good, is good because it's lowering cost, it's putting a lot of pressure on banks. On the other hand, banks are also providing a very robust reg, um, risk control framework, which is a value for, uh, for the industry and, and for the, including for the consumers. Regulators should balance these uh, different forces, meaning the push to innovation, which also, you know, is bringing, you know, to the boundaries of the regulatory, current regulatory framework, but also the roles of banks. And I'm convinced banks will have a role to play uh, going forward. I'm not going to disagree with that. <laughs> <laughs> but gentlemen, we have to leave it there. That was Luca Corsini, Head of Transactions and Payments at Unicredit, and Massimo Rotino, Head of Transactions and Payments, FI Sales for Unicredit. Thank you so Thank much you. for joining us here on Cyber Thank you, Juliet.
and enjoy the rest of the Cybos event.